And we all feel very lucky and very blessed that we, we have this opportunity to look back at the planet. And you, you just want to share that with people. You want to get the best camera, the best pictures out there, because even with those things, you can't really duplicate what we see with our own two eyes while we're in the spacecraft. It's just an amazing planet, an amazing universe. I was born in Cleveland, Ohio, but grew up in Needham, Massachusetts. So I consider Massachusetts my hometown. Went to public schools in Needham. Um, at the time, uh, I thought it was sort of a small school. We graduated with about 500 people, so hence I've learned it's not such a small school. Went to school, and of course, I had a brother and a sister. They're both older than me. They both did very good in school, so I was expected to do very good as well as all the teachers in high school. Oh, I know your brother, I know your sister, so of course, you have to do well too. So I did pretty good in high school. Um, and when I graduated, I was hoping to go to college somewhere in the area, because of course Boston has great schools. Uh, but um, much to my dismay when I was 17 years old, I actually didn't get into my first choices of college. Um, so I applied to the Naval Academy amongst other schools and I got in. A um, story that I tell a lot of people at the time, I had really long hair, a little Indian kid, and um, couldn't even foresee cutting it off. And of course, first day at the Naval Academy, whoop, they chop your hair off, so that was a little shocking. Um, you become very bonded there with your classmates. I was a class of 87, um, and you just want to graduate and you want to be part of that team. So after college, I went down to Pensacola, Florida, and I started flight school. Again, hoping to fly jets, but I actually got helicopters. Um, at that point in time, there were only a couple women jet pilot opportunities, a lot more helicopter opportunities. So that's what I got. I came down here to Johnson Space Center as a tour met John Young. He talked about flying to the moon um, and he's been there twice and so I think he knows a little bit about it and he talked about landing on the moon and learning how to fly some type of vertical landing uh, aircraft and I thought to myself wow I already know how to do that so maybe I should uh, look into this a little bit more seriously. I started in 1998 and it's uh, it's a little bit of a long road. Um, first couple years are ASCAN training, astronaut candidate training. Uh, where you just sort of learn about spacecraft, you learn uh, about your classmates, you learn uh, about the different aspects of flying in space like EVAs and spacewalks and robotic operations. In 2003, I was uh, asked to be part of um, an, a long duration mission to the International Space Station and I was like amazed. I went up on the Space Shuttle um, Discovery uh, on STS-116. They dropped me off at the space station like a school bus drops kids off. And uh, six months later, another school bus, uh, Atlantis STS-117, came and, and picked me back up. And in the meantime, while we were up there, um, we, were, we were at a stage where right in the middle of constructing the space station. So lots of things were dynamically changing on the space station, meaning physical parts and pieces. We uh, ended up doing four spacewalks while I was up there. I finally got to go back to space again five years later in 2012. I went up this time on a Russian Soyuz vehicle and came back on the same one because we use Soyuz more like a lifeboat versus a school bus to transfer people in parts and stuff like that. And I got to be the commander of Th Expedition 33. Uh, flew with a Japanese guy, Aki Hoshidi, and also a uh, Russian guy, Yuri uh, Malenchenko, um, my uh, good buddies, as well as seeing other uh, groups of uh, Soyuz crews coming in beforehand and after. So pretty busy time frame again. Um, this time the space station was completely uh, constructed, so it's a huge working laboratory with all of our international partners. 